All right, are you ready for this? If you haven't seen my update video yet, or the Montreal video that went alongside this, then get ready for a shock. Oh my god. Face cam is a thing. I have done plenty enough to explain uh, this, and the reason as to why you're seeing this gorgeous face right now. Uh, so go check out either of those videos, like you should, uh, to hear a little bit more details behind it. But uh, yeah, this is the uh, third video that I'm actually recording uh, in this session. I don't feel like explaining it again. All I will say is hi, hello, this is my beautiful face, this is my Hartford Whalers franchise mode series, and let's get this show on the road, because today we begin a new season. We begin the first season of the rest of our lives. The team is set. We have Nathan McKinnon. The rebuild, phase one is over. As we get ready for this season, we have... No pressure on us whatsoever. If we don't succeed, cool, because I don't really expect us to yet. If we win the Stanley Cup, tremendous. We're not we're not going to win the Stanley Cup because we don't have a 76 overall goalie, and that's the way to win cups, don't you know? Tried to fight off that burp. Couldn't do it. Odd aftertaste. <clears throat> not not great. Trying to trying to fight that off. I had a sandwich before this. I mean, me, a sandwich, I know. Shocking. But, yeah. <clears throat> it's fighting back. That's all we'll say. Anyway, I wanted to check the block. I wanted to check the scouting, which is uh, not currently set up. So it's a good thing uh, that I checked. Let's go WHL for, I don't know, a month? How about a month? Why not? Exact potentials, they don't matter. And we can't. You know, we can't choose how good our scouts are or how accurate they are in each region. So who cares, right? It's all a shot in the dark anyway. Enough enough for the negativity though, right? Let's let's be positive. Look at this team. This beautiful team where people still can't believe that I held on to Tierney and Connor Brown. But they're still here for now, damn it. And they will be until we find players to replace them. Hopefully somebody like a Tony Andrews or a Tikhanov. Or an Arthur Serrata. That is the hope. That is the plan. We need to get this as I hit the controller on the desk. We need to get this rebuilding hockey town like um, turnover. This uh, Jesus, what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? No. <laughs> improv. Not improv. Uh, the word would be uh, a cycle, technically. What's the word I'm thinking of? I mean, it's, it's early in the morning, right? But, you know, where you have your group of prospects and then the next wave replaces them and then the next wave replaces them. I've said the word a million times, especially during Rebuilding Hockey Town. You know what I'm talking about, right? Hopefully, if not, then I don't know what to tell you because I can't think of the word. I will say, though, swig of Arnold Palmer. That's right. You thought I was lying about drinking Arnold Palmer. How great is this uh, Bruins Cup, by the way? You thought I was lying about drinking that much Arnold Palmer. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. It is, despite this being a uh, hashtag, not an ad. My God, what a drink. What a drink it is. Anyway, uh, let's go defense for four weeks. Why not? That's just the magic number right now as we get to sit back and wait to see just how good this team is and or isn't. Doesn't really matter to me. So in the meantime... I suppose I can just ramble, right? Maybe? I don't know. I'm rambling already. Although I gotta admit, I gotta admit, I don't know. Aside from the setup, and I talked about this uh, in the Montreal video, I don't know how bad like the, the glare is in the glasses. I know, these just, these gorgeous, gorgeous glasses. I mean, they really bring out my eyes. I'm not sure how much glare there is from the screens. There's not really too much I can do about that. These are full-time glasses, and I'll tell you why. I mentioned this on stream the other night. It's mainly because uh, when I was a kid, growing up, you know, playing the Super Nintendo, playing the N64, uh, for some reason, I was in the habit of apparently standing this close to the damn TV. So, uh, yeah, I've been dealing with these since I was like, uh, I don't know, three, four years old. <laughs> 
So, oh, Daniel Sprong's hurt. That's just great. So, I don't know. I'm kind of in the habit where it's like, oh, I'm going to keep them. Why not? I just, I don't know. Contacts. There's something weird about putting a lens onto your eye. I don't know. It's not very comfortable. At least, I mean, I can't, I can't say whether or not it's comfortable. Never had contacts. I just prefer to wear glasses. It's easier. It is easier. Dadnoff's going to get the call up. Evgeny Dadonov. And he will play uh, in place of one uh, Daniel Sprong. I also don't know why, when you can tell it to uh, replace the person in the lines, that it doesn't, uh, you know, factor in 3v3 lines. It's a little bit weird. But, yeah, Dadnoff will immediately get the chance there on that second line with Quick and Dirksen because I'm lazy and don't really feel like editing the lines any more than that. Uh, because, of course, we also have to fix the AHL lines. Mikanoff is one of our players. Low top six. Popovich, low top six. Low top nine, low top six. Let's go with Mikanoff. Why? I don't know. Why would I know? I don't know. Laziness. I mean, aside from the obvious fact of uh, laziness. I mean, have you seen this backdrop? I mean, yeah, it's, it, this is the third video I've done this, by the way. It's a gorgeous backdrop. But, you know, other YouTubers, they got these, like, beautiful setups. Some people use green screens. I was tempted. I don't know. Maybe I should. Especially for a video like this, because it's like, oh, it's a heart for Zeers, but you got the big-ass Bruins logo in the background. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Uh, is Phil Crosby already on a 3v3 line? He is, but he can be on two of them because he's that damn good. Uh, point being, I would probably have a better setup right about now. Maybe. Potentially. At least something with a little bit more effort, but... Boy, I don't have much space in the room I'm in right now. This is pretty much the best I could do. Daniel Sprong's back, so I don't have to ramble uh, for much longer. How did Dadnoff do? Not bad. Not bad. Now back to, uh, I was going to say back to Junior with you. You're, you're a little bit too old for that. But uh, back to the minors with you. Don't think we have to worry about him uh, not clearing waivers. I think we're okay on that front. Let's get one Daniel Sprong back into the lineup. And again, fix the 3v3 lines. So much fun. Yay. So exciting. Uh, he is a right wing. Let's get him back in the lineup. And then down in the AHL, Mr. Mikanoff. Uh, time to take a seat, buddy. For one, Evgeny Dadnoff. The good thing is Dadnoff didn't lose an overall point. Anyway, we are back. No, we're not. Okay. No, I thought we were going to keep simming games. I was wrong. I was mistaken. How about one month? Surprise, surprise. Matt Hackett gained, ice to, uh, gained morale because of ice time. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. I have nothing to talk about right now. So thanks, EA, for, you know. <laughs> thanks, EA, you know, for injuring somebody. Because that, that makes it a little bit easier uh, to find something to talk about. I do suppose. Guess who we're calling up? It's Dadnoff again. Why not quick and easy, and we'll just put him in on the fourth line. Yep, that's exactly what we'll do. Why not? So, Ganny Dadnoff in on the fourth line, and then for forwards, let's go with Popovich this time. Why not? How is that team not completely awful, by the way? Because, boy, that lineup certainly sucks. Uh, speaking of not completely awful, 16, make that 10 and 1, on the season. My God, what's what's going on up here? What's going on with the, the itching and the scratching? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know. Got an itchy scalp, man. What can you do? What can you do? Anyway, rambling. Again, only the finest of qualities for you, my beautiful people. I don't know. Do you expect this to be any less... Did you, did you expect this to be any more? Just because, oh, we can see Tugi now. I'm, I'm sure he's not like the same kind of rambling goof that he always was. No! Nope. Mm-mm. Even, even with face cam, now you can just see me, I mean, sit back and laugh at myself. It's because it's like, wow, people actually watch you, and I don't know why. <laughs> I still don't know why. It, I thank you for it. I do, because, of course, you're the reason why I'm sitting here at this obnoxious hour looking into this beautiful webcam that you helped pay for and watching this team just suffer injury after injury after injury. 
Griffin Reinhardt. Thought you were going to be on this team this year. Well, guess what? You get the chance now, buddy. You'll be on that uh, defensive pairing, and your replacement on the defensive side of things will be one Andrew Nielsen. And, oh, guess what? Extra attacker and shootout lines again. <sighs> Do I just go best? Yep. Yeah, you know what? Best lines. There we go. Don't care. Don't care. I'm not going to sit here and keep editing this. It's fine. The goaltending is good. It's fine. I don't care. It's fine. Who cares? It's fine. It's fine. Trust me. We're already in January, which is fairly surprising. I mean, we do still have a decent record. Again, when it comes to making any trades or anything, I really don't think that we have to. I think we're good. So, speaking of trades, we're going to keep the trade block empty. As Casey Ribeiro is back to 100%. So, let's go ahead and put him back in the lineup in favor of Griffin Reinhardt. And we'll also drop Mr. Reinhardt back down to the AHL just to make them a little bit better. What's he going to do? Complain? Oh, no. Although, isn't he on a two? Is he on a one-way deal? One-year deal or two-way deal? Two-year deal, I should say. He's obviously not on a two-way deal. How pissed are you going to be? Okay, thank God. One way, uh, one year deal. One way deal as well. I was only somewhat wrong. I was pretty wrong. Hopefully, Ribeiro doesn't get injured. Thankfully, he didn't. Like I mentioned, we have a couple of players that we could, you know, potentially re sign early. Maybe some players that we could trade. The goal is to make the playoffs. If we don't find that success, hey, whatever. Another injury. This one, the Cannon Appleby. Guess who gets called up? It's Griffin Reinhardt. Very good. Congrats. That's a round of applause to you guys. Uh, for those of you that guessed right, if you guessed wrong or didn't guess at all, disappointed in you. I'm not mad. Just disappointed. What the hell do we do with this team right now? Best lines. That's what we do. That is what we do. So Dadnoff's still in, which is good. Appleby is now out. That works for me. It actually bumped up Griffin Reinhardt, though, which, um, not ideal, but I'll go with it for now. Again, we'll go best lines down in the AHL. Why not? We'll see what happens. So we might very well sim through. I mean, we're only like, what, 12, 13 minutes into this video? We may just sim through the entire regular season in one shot there's really no controversy there's no major moves we have to make again the team is set we will only get better heading uh headed i was gonna say headed and heading into and it came out heading headed into the next draft you know we're still gonna have the option to make moves uh similar to what we made last year acquiring some major players because we still have a ton of first round picks of course that is still the plan heading into the up coming draft so for this season hey we do as well as we do and i'm fine with that and again it's the last season for someone like tierney to prove himself he's doing well for a third liner philip Deneau as well taylor radish not too bad i'm actually really impressed with the bottom six so the team could pretty much be set i mean again the one thing that we're really missing at this point is just other prospects who might make it we don't really have that big defensive prospect on the team right now. Mark Rolou might make it. Rolo, Rolou, again, I'm just calling him Mark. We have some other prospects as well, which I know some people are probably screaming, get them into the lineup. If the injuries calm down, maybe I will. Toogie, turn off the injuries. What the hell is this? What is this? I don't know. But no, injuries stay on. Creates more drama. Makes it a bit more exciting. At least for me, because there's nothing better than losing a great player <laughs> at the beginning of a postseason run, as we have had happen on numerous occasions. And if you don't agree with the thought of having injuries on and it doesn't make things more dramatic, uh, may I remind you of a certain series called The Manhattan Project. I will accept your apology in the form of a postcard. Go best lines again. Get Dadnoff back in that lineup, and we shall continue... We already have a good record. So, I mean, the question is, of course, we lose 7-1 to one as I say that. The question is whether or not we should buy. I don't think we will. I think we're good to go. I hope we're good to go. The next episode looks like it's on course to be a playoff video, but we have lost four in a row. Make that five. B 
Beautiful. Can we make it six against Boston? No, we can't, of course. Of course we beat Boston. <sighs> All right, can we at least beat Montreal, too? No, but we can lose Gary Harkins to injury. That's lovely. Just lovely. All right, Griffin Reinhardt, welcome back to the team again, buddy. Again, I thought he'd be playing on this team this year. Instead, Casey Ribeiro turned out to be pretty damn good and now he's on this team and now hey you know what griffin you get to play at least a little bit so congrats on that let's continue well actually and we beat montreal eight to two i'm actually going to sim right to deadline day we'll take a look at potentially good lord so many injuries we'll take a look at potentially making changes to the team but i'm not guaranteeing anything we'll call up andrew nielsen for now good thing we signed some depth players huh Let's go best lines yet again. Our defense is, uh, it's actually not looking too bad. I can actually send Nielsen back down because Appleby is back. So let's do that. Nielsen, where are you at? My God. I swear to God, my, my one neighbor, right? My one neighbor has, a, can you hear that on the mic? I can hear him coughing through that wall. If he sneezes... You can hear it on the other side of the goddamn country. Quit clearing your throat, man. <sighs> damn it. God damn it. I, I, I don't know what to say about that. I tried to record late enough where it's like, hey, there's no way anybody will be awake and I have to sneeze. I have to sneeze. <sighs> <sighs> there it is. Nothing's on the sweatshirt. I'm just holding my arm there for dramatic effect. That is as close to a dab as you will ever get. Is me sneezing? That's all a dab is. Ah, chew. Oh, hey, I can make that a thing. Stupid. Oh, God. Mucus. Ugh. Oh, it's so bad. Here, you know what? I'm going to mute the mic for one second. That's gross. <laughs> That's gross. But I had no choice. Quit your coughing. I will... Go to the other side of that wall and beat you. I had no choice, is what I'm trying to say. I can still hear the guy. Jesus. Um, I had no choice. Uh, no tissues. No handkerchief anywhere. So, uh, yeah. Oh, God. Swig of Arnold Palmer, though. I thank you guys for watching. Again, uh, when I said, or when I always say, I thank you guys for watching, uh, it's because I know how ridiculous I look when I'm recording these. And now you also know how ridiculous I look while recording these. Here's to you. Delicious. We're going to get that sponsorship. Austin Watson. On waivers, one year left. Sure, I'll actually claim him. Why not? That could that could uh, be a little bit troublesome if we decide to, um, you know, make a deal. But with 19 games to go, we are in first place by 7 points. Nathan McKinnon with 55 points in 63 games. So we will look over our team, and we'll try to decide whether or not we really need any help. Of course, that top six is intact. Dirksen, 34 points, proving he might be worth, you know, keeping around. I mean, I'd argue he'd be like an elite third liner, but he is currently listed as a second liner. The third line itself, I mean, personally, I think it looks all right. It's not great, but overall, I think we're good. The only thing you could argue is a bit more defensive depth. Uh, Petrolinen's been great. Malcolm Subban, not so much. So, Malcolm, you got to uh, you got to figure it out, buddy. So the only thing right now that we really need to look at is depth. So let's go ahead and do just that. And I suppose the first thing we should do is look to see if we have uh, any any contract spots. We don't. So we are probably. Going to have to rely on trades here, which is fine. That's not really a concern. Uh, we can see if we can get any depth players for cheap. That'll be down in the AHL to start. That'll make the Connecticut Whale better. It will take away from uh, some spots for some of those prospects to play, but that is fine by me. So we do have our five goaltenders. That is fine. On defense, of course, we are still going to need that uh, next big defensive prospect. And honestly, we just need to sign defensemen in general. It's forwards that we have too much of, right? 
Yeah. Especially after bringing in Austin Watson. All right, so Lang is actually looking half decent. Costi, 55 overall, 20 years old. We can get rid of him, uh, especially compared to Mikanov. You know, 60 overall at 20 years old. So Costi can go. Uh, Popovich can stay for now. Paxpu can stay as well. Actually, in terms of depth here, we might only be bringing in one of the prospects. Smithson. Decent potential, though, so I'm not sure if I want to give up on him just yet. So, yeah, you know what? That is that is our one player that we're going to look to move. We're going to look to move Costi, and we are going to try and find one extra player. I am seriously going. I don't know if that's picking up on the mic. The problem, the problem is, right, like, where I am right now, it's like a house, but it's also technically an apartment. So it's like the houses that are, like, basically connected. The problem is... The dude hangs out in his basement, and they didn't, like, properly insulate, I guess, so sound just fucking carries over. Oh, God. First world problems, right? First world problems. Uh, who can we pick up here for forwards? Jake DeBrusque. <laughs> or Kosarenkov, huh? Wouldn't that be interesting? DeBrusque is actually doing fairly well. That is, uh, that is interesting. Costy for DeBrusque. You know what? I'm not against it. I'm not against it. Am I still distracted by that guy? You're damn right I am. <laughs> I'll have to uh, I'll have to bring him over. Neighbor cam. And I can just fucking punch him in the th I'm not saying I'm going to assault somebody on camera. I would never, I'd never punch somebody on camera. That'd be incriminating. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. Is it a funny one? No. Violence is not funny. Violence is not the answer. Okay. <laughs> Rambling for the win. Uh, can we get a fourth round pick? No. Straight up? Offer doesn't meet our block at all. Okay, well, who wants Costi on their team then? Carolina. Do you have anybody that I'd want? Sorry, Jake DeBrusque. You're pretty much gone. Ryan Ellis on defense. Well, no thank you then. Anybody else? Hey, we got some offers now. Colorado. Off offers? Options is what I meant. Nobody great. Chase on, Nick Shore, Tyler Bertuzzi. Let's see. I mean, Chase on could be a decent option. Nick Shore hasn't played a whole hell of a lot, which, I mean, you guys know my love for Nick Shore. I mean, especially, too, defensively. It's pretty damn good. We will look elsewhere for now, but I'd say Nick Shore is probably my top target. You got somebody like Boone Jenner, Casey Sezikis. Sezikis. Two years left. Mm -mm, not happening. Nick Felino, expiring deal. Nick Felino, how would you like to be a Hartford Whaler? I wouldn't mind bringing in Nick Felino. I could look elsewhere, you know, and actually do my job and look at every possible team. Uh, but for now, let's just try to pick Horde from the Columbus Blue Jackets. I didn't think it would go through. It did. We just picked up Nick Felino. Cool. Uh, the only other thing I want to check is I would love to get a few more picks because uh, right now that Dallas pick is looking pretty damn good. How many firsts do we have? Six? We have seven. Even better. Three second rounders, a couple of thirds, a couple of fourths. I'd like to get rid of these sixth round picks. I'd like to move up for another fifth. So the question is, who sucks? Dallas isn't as bad as you would think. 20 wins for Minnesota. So how would you like to give me uh, fourth round picks. How does that sound? Probably not great, but how about a fourth this year and a sixth next year? Sound good? I honestly didn't think they'd take that, even with the value bar in uh, in their favor. Right. Well, I'm pretty sure those are the only two moves I'm going to make. I'm going to bring in Nick Felino. He's going to be a depth player. Does he start down in junior? I'm about to just smash that wall. Whew. Hmm. Nothing I can do about it. Nothing I can do about it. So I can't send down Nick Foligno. Uh, so he'll just sit there and hopefully not be angry about it because I'm not getting rid of anybody else, nor am I sending anybody down. So, yeah, there you go. We bring in Nick Foligno. We move a couple of picks. We're pretty much good to go. Why bother making other major changes, right? Like I said roughly 22 or 23, 24 minutes ago, whatever the hell it is. I mean, this year is just more about, hey, let's see how we do. Next year, though, 
after this, what's going to be a major draft, that is when we get serious about winning again. I mean, of course, we've made it to a cup final once. It didn't go too well, as you damn well know. And as I damn well remember. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Can we get our 40th win? They're making us wait for it. They're making us wait for it. But we do have TVR back, so hooray for that. I mean, you could have argued, too. Maybe bring in better defense. But again, it's it's third pairing. We don't want to bring in anybody who's too good. But then again, yeah, maybe bringing in somebody else on defense would have been the uh, would have been the better choice. As we'll send down Griffin Reinhardt again. I'm sure he won't be pissed about that at all. But yeah, I mean, we we definitely could have brought in somebody better, even like a top four player that could have, for example been good enough. Who did that take out of the lineup? It took Connor Brown out of the lineup. Over my dead body. Over my dead body will you take Connor Brown out of this lineup. He is a whaler, damn it. He is a whaler. Uh, point B. Could have gotten a top four player. Played him in third pairing role. Even if only for the rest of the season, but I don't want to sit there and have to deal with it. We finally get our 40th win after another ungodly five game losing streak. We lost what? Is that math? Basic math. Basic math. Seven out of eight. We lost seven out of eight. And now we've won seven in a row. We're a streaky team, clearly. 46 wins on the year. Could very well finish with 50. That is my hope, is that we will do just that. Time will tell. We're going to have to win the majority of these games. And Warren Dirksen's going to be out for a couple of days. But hey, guess what? We have Nick Felino. It actually puts... It actually puts Connor Brown on the uh, top line. That is hilarious. Is Felino a lefty? Yeah, okay, so we'll just put Felino there. And there we go. Perfect. Perfect. Let's keep going. I mean, Dirksen's going to be back probably before the Edmonton game, I would imagine. Yep, there you go. They always come back a few days early. Don't know why. Kind of annoying. Uh, Felino, I know you went up an overall point there in the meantime, but you are out again. That is Connor Brown's spot. I thank you very much. We need to win one more game out of the final two. And there you go. The heart. Jesus. How the hell did that work out? We lost seven out of eight. And then we go on, what's that, 10? A 12-game winning streak to end the season. I don't know if the Connecticut Whale will make the postseason. 38, 34, and 10. But a 12-game winning streak to end the regular season. Holy hell. 107 points, top of the Central Division. Not only that, with 51 wins, we managed to win the conference. We managed to finish third in the league, tied with Arizona. So we won on tiebreaker, as far as the conference goes. But uh, yeah, not too shabby. 107 points, goals for... Per game was towards the top half of the league, but not top 10 with a 289. Goals against was a 2.4, which despite Malcolm Subban's struggles at that point, was the fourth lowest uh, GAA per game. Our power play was at 21.6%, which was top 10 in the league. And our penalty kill at 80.9% was top half of the league, but just outside of the top 10. And uh, by the way, just to get confirmation, the Connecticut Whale uh, missed the postseason by roughly 10 points. So I can't really say I'm surprised. Obviously, this year was about getting some progression from some of our younger players, uh, including Tony Andrews, who finished with 71, point, uh, 71 points, and Phil Crosby, 70 points. Yet again, what a beast. Dad not 40 points in 53 games. Uh, but at the AHL level, because we... Might as well take a look. Nathan McKinnon led the team. 71 points in 82 games. Not bad. Again, somebody of his caliber. Oh, Emmy scratching your neck. What a pup here. You know what? We got to make a tradition. There she is. A wild doggo. In the wild. I'm sorry. Back to me. I know. I know. It's, it's a downgrade. I know. But what can you do? Anyway, with Nathan McKinnon, you'd like to have him be over a point a game player. Not bad. Lucas Leidecker, 64 points. Not bad. 57 points for Nolan Patrick. Ugh, you'd like a bit more from those two. And that does 
you know, it does raise some concerns for the future of our top line, but we'll see what happens. Sprong, only 45 points, very disappointing. Phil Quick with 44, Dirksen with 42. Uh, Philip Deneau, 38 points, though. You absolute beauty. So here's the thing, right? Point-wise, I expected a little bit better from some players, but despite those struggles, first place in the conference. Uh, Gary Harkins with 50 points, 25 goals, 47 points for Provorov, 42 for Appleby, Tuzolino with only 24. The goaltender, I mean, Yerky Petrolinen, he was our big pickup last year, one of our big pickups. He had a 9.23. Malcolm Subban, only 19 appearances. He really struggled. So a down year for Malcolm. I'm certainly glad we went with the goaltender and Petrolinen that we ended up getting. We'll take a look around the entire league. John Tavares, 111 points. Josh Hosang with 97. 84 assists. The next highest was Donald Bolesky at 68. That might be the highest assist number I have ever seen in a sim. That is absolutely ridiculous. Now, I don't even know how I can rightfully move on to check our progress supports, but I will. We'll see what kind of progression we ended up getting from the team. And after that, we're pretty much good to go. We're going to save the playoffs for the next episode. So again, uh, natural growth, statistical growth, you know, look at whatever one you prefer to uh, kind of look at to judge how good a player is. But Tuzolino and Petrolinum both went up to 85s. We'll take a look here at other uh, natural growth. Nothing at the NHL level. At the AHL level, though, you had Lang go up to a 73. No progression from Spike Rowe. A little bit disappointing. Tikhanov went up a little bit. Two-point improvement for Sereda and Knutson. A little bit of progression there. Decent progression from Bob Menard. He, he uh, went up four points. Three-point improvement for Popovich. Aside from that, nothing major. So that's uh, it's a little bit concerning, but we'll see if some of these players get better heading in to the next season. So as abrupt as it feels, there was really no controversy. We had that seven-game losing streak. We bounced back by winning 12 in a row to end the season. The only thing to do now is to see whether or not we're playing the St. Louis Blues or whatever team from the Pacific Division ended up finishing in the other wildcard spot. Let's find out who we're playing in the first round of this postseason. It's going to be the St. Louis Blues. All right, so the Blues finished in that final wildcard spot. One seed against the eighth seed, and it looks like it was Vegas. So it was either going to be St. Louis or Vegas, and we'll end up playing the St. Louis Blues in the next round. So, guys, I hope you did enjoy. I mean, not only for what happened in the episode, but I mean, come on. You just, I know. I know. So ridiculously good looking. I hope you enjoyed this episode, though. A very successful episode. I feel like I'm underplaying that, uh, mainly because I'm aggravated by son of a bitch over there. Which, by the way, if you can't hear him that is hilarious it makes it that much better i gotta admit but again i feel like i'm underselling how well we did this episode this was a great season for us this team is only going to get better as we head into next year again all of those draft picks that we can take advantage of and much like last year if we end up getting somebody who isn't great we move them and we pick up somebody who is and i guess as we end this let's take a look at the end of or at the bottom of the league standings uh, i know i had the dallas pick so they're gonna have pretty good lottery odds did we have nashville's pick i honestly can't remember we had so many selections so time will tell i'm sure you guys will look back to see how we did and how we could potentially do but you never know with the draft lottery so i don't want to put too much stock into it anyway that will do it for this one. Again, I hope you did enjoy. If you did, feel free to leave a like on the video to help support it. It as in this video. In case you didn't get that, I don't know, maybe maybe you zoned out. Maybe you got confused. Subscribe if you haven't already to continue following this series and others and to see more of this beautiful face. Links are in the description to my Twitter and Twitch as well. Give me a follow on there if you have not already. Uh, check out, of course, today's Montreal and uh, the Montreal episode and the update video that I put up, which explains more as to why this is now a thing. Because it is. 
And until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Have a good one. Take it easy. Sayonara. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Adios. Yeah.